We're all familiar with the popular puzzle game Tetris. It's gone on to be one of the most important games of all time. Its simple yet challenging gameplay is probably the reason for this as it's very addicting, easy to pick up and play, but hard to master. There have been many Tetris variants over the years, but there has only been one 6th gen outing in the entire history of Tetris. Tetris World. This game was released on the GBA which the GBA port was developed by 3D6 Games on September 5th, 2001 in North America and December 7th, 2001 PAL territories. A PC version followed on November 23rd, 2001 for North America and April 5th, 2002 for PAL territories. A version then came out on the PS2 on March 20th, 2002 and July 26th, 2002 for North America and PAL regions respectively. The PS2 and PC versions were developed by Blue Planet Software. The last versions of the game were the Xbox and GameCube versions developed by Radical Entertainment. The GameCube port came out on June 23, 2002 and September 27, 2002 for North America and PAL regions respectively. The Xbox port came out on June 24, 2002 and September 20, 2002 for North America and PAL regions respectively. Believe it or not, this game has a story. It's a rather simple one, but for a first time story for Tetris, years before Puyo Puyo Tetris became a thing, I suppose it's not too bad. The main plot involves the home world of the Minos. Their solar system's son, Hadar, is about to go supernova. There are six specific Mino Tetranaut, each one for a different variant of Tetris featured. The main goal is to get up to rank 11 to rescue more Minos for all the variants of Tetris. You start at rank 1 for each of these variants, and after you make one clear of lines within 2 minutes, and then make another clear within 2 minutes after the first, how you clear depends on the Tetris type you play, you'll rank up. The number of lines you need to clear starts low enough, but as you keep rising up the ranks, the number of lines you need to clear in 2 minutes increases. After the second clear, you can keep clearing consecutive amounts of lines afterwards one at a time to keep ranking up. If two minutes runs out before you clear the required number of lines, you'll have to re-clear twice within two minutes per clear to get back on track. As I mentioned, there are six worlds that the Mino Tetranaut visit, one for each Tetris variant. Let's talk about the variants of Tetris in this game. You have regular Tetris, which plays out like you would expect to. Keep clearing lines normally. Square Tetris has you using the various pieces to make squares. Clearing lines with squares will cause more lines to clear. Cascade Tetris makes you clear lines to cause a cascade. A cascade happens when a cleared line causes other blocks to fall and clear another line. The bigger the cascade, the more you clear. Sticky Tetris will have you clear the bottom line of garbage blocks. Blocks of the same color will stick together in this particular variant, and that's why it's called Sticky Tetris. If you get 25 same color blocks to connect, a critical mass will form and be cleared from the matrix. Hotline Tetris has six colored lines that will clear a specific number of lines. The higher the line clear, the more lines cleared. Finally, Fusion Tetris involves single blocks called Fusion. You must clear the garbage blocks in order to get all the fusions to link together. The main fusion pieces matter the most here, so link them fast. The main gameplay itself is fine for the most part. Each Tetris variant, while having elements that may blend over into other variants, each variant does a good job in standing out in their own ways. They also control very well as well. You move pieces with the analog stick slash d-pad to rotate them into place. You have a button to send the piece all the way down immediately, and you have a button to rotate the piece. You can also hold a specific piece to the side in case you can't find a good use for it. While these additions may be seen as breaking Tetris by some, oh excuse me, breaking Tetris, that's not really the case given you still have to worry about the time limit which is the main game's undoing. More often than not, I struggled with some of the variants trying to find the best strategies, only to realize time was not on my side in this game. Even the blocks even if they tend to move faster to the bottom, it feels like it's not enough at times because each variant requires something different to clear. This overlapping may lead to mixing up strategies and causing more fumbles, but it's more of learning the process for the variants in my opinion. 
The whole look and feel of the game is a very bizarre one. Backgrounds for the Tetris variants are interesting to say the least. There's a nature theme, mountain, ocean, and several more. Furthermore, there's always a very whispery female voice calling out your clears as you make them. It's certainly bizarre, and I'm not sure what they were thinking in going with this aesthetic, but it gives the game a memorable look and feel. In a way, you could say this is ASMR Tetris before ASMR was ever a thing. I guess that makes it ahead of its time. It will stick with you even after you beat the game. The music itself has a soft techno vibe to it. Some of it very feels very dreamlike, relaxing in nature to offset the high intensity of the game. It creates an interesting clash that also sticks with you. Graphics themselves look fine. Models for the blocks, the Mino Tetranaut, and even the backgrounds do their job to create that striking aesthetic. Models, while not overly sharp, they do look pleasing, and the game's overall look is very pleasant, despite being bizarre. Once you're done with the single player game, you can continue to play for high score in the arcade boat. This not only allows you to play any variant of Tetris that the game offers freely, but you can also play against your friends in multiplayer, in addition to the single player stuff, which is always a plus. The Xbox version even had online multiplayer via Xbox Live, though it did go down in 2010 with the shutdown of Xbox Live, but with Insignia bringing back OG Xbox Live, we might see a small resurgence of this game online-wise. Despite this, there really isn't much else in terms of replayability for this game. If anything is going to keep you coming back, it's the addictiveness of it all. There's something about trying to beat your high score in Tetris that can keep you coming back for more, and that still rings true in this game. It'll be addicting to try to beat the main game, and the same thing applies for the non-story modes. There really isn't much more I can say about Tetris Worlds. By and large, the game itself is pretty straightforward, if a little bit complex due to some of the variants of Tetris included. While the variants themselves aren't too difficult to get a hold of, some things tend to overlap from some of them, which can cause some confusion. Not to mention, the time limit itself can be a serious pain in the ass, because it's always two minutes. And if you don't clear it within the required time, with the necessary number of clears, you'll have to try again, which can be pretty frustrating. Players who get a grasp early on will probably not take too long to beat the game, but beginners may struggle more. Tetris Worlds can be found for cheap, and if you need a Tetris game with many variants in addition to regular, this release isn't too bad to have. I give Tetris Worlds a 3 out of 5. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, click the big red button below to subscribe. Check out the other links in the description for more cool stuff, and check out the playlist on screen for more content. See you in the next video!